What's going on everybody? This is Bobby Douglas. Welcome to another 2021 NBA Draft Prospect full game video breakdown. Today, we are going to be taking a look at Illinois guard Ayo Desumu. Desumu, to me, represents one of the more interesting developmental timelines in this draft class. He came in as a freshman, pretty raw, needing to like revamp his jump shot and kind of learn more point guard skills. And then this year as a junior, he really exploded, averaged around 20 points a game, 6 assists, 5 rebounds, um, just a triple-double threat. Uh, got a few this year, and so I think he's really blossomed into a first-round pick on my board. He will definitely be in that top 25 range, and so I'm excited to watch him play today. This is a game against Rutgers where Illinois is actually going to lose this one, but Io is going to have 22 points, 11 rebounds, and 6 assists on 10 of 20 shooting from the floor. So let's get right into it, and here we go. He's going to be number 11 in the blue, so he's going to have the ball right here, and then he's going to drop it off to Trent Frazier. Um, so yeah, Io just represents, as I mentioned in the intro, just a very interesting developmental timeline because he came in as a freshman, um, pretty highly regarded four-star prospect. He was like a top 35 player coming out of his high school class. Um, wasn't a McDonald's All-American or anything like that, but still very highly sought after. Um, he's from Morgan Park High School, which is a uh, high school in Chicago, Illinois. And he was actually down to Wake Forest and the University of Illinois for his college decision. I remember watching the live stream of his college decision when I was in high school. Um, Io and I are obviously the same year in school, um, both finishing up our junior season or junior years, I should say. Um, I'm not an athlete, but um, you know we're the same age, so I was following him uh, throughout his entire college career as he gets that rebound right there and is going to look to push and transition. Um, and so you know I've he's been on my radar just in terms of. of being a college player and then obviously an NBA draft prospect since his junior year in high school. So that was back in 2017. We're going to see right here, Io just making this simple read, um, kicking it out to Trent Frazier for the open three. And that'll be uh, bottoms for Frazier. And so, you know, Io's always been kind of on my radar. Um, I actually got a chance to interview him back when he was in high school. Um, it was actually a really funny story. So I actually reached out to him because I had a... Uh, you know, a basketball blog in high school, I focused on like college basketball, things like that. Um, obviously didn't take off because I'm doing this stuff now, which I enjoy a lot more. Um, as we see Io get to the rim, can't finish right there. Um, but I reached out to him through Snapchat, interviewed him. It was just a simple print interview, nothing videoed or anything like that. Um, but he was a super nice guy. And um, ever since then, I've kind of been following his career. And yeah, so now he's probably going to be uh, late first, early second round pick in the NBA draft, which I'm really excited for him just on a personal level, and so, um, you know, last year I did another video on him, um, so if you guys want to go back and see kind of the evolution of Io, you can maybe go back and watch that video from last year that I did leading up to the 2020 NBA draft, then he obviously decided to come back, stay in school, and I think he definitely made the right decision because now he's being talked about as a guy that can really contribute on an NBA floor, and yeah, he's going to grab that rebound right there. So that's kind of just like a little bit of background on Io and just kind of how I've been following him for the past like five years, I would say. Um, you know, at Illinois, he was pretty much the undisputed leader of this program for the last three seasons, you know, has great leadership ability, kind of has that, you know, that unwavering confidence about him. He's going to get the ball right here and let's see how he attacks his pick and roll. Simple kick out to the uh, Demonte Williams right here. Just simple reads. Io not going to be a guy that really makes advanced pick and roll reads, but in terms of just like finding this little slip out of the pick and pop, almost you know he can definitely make these reads. Nine times out of ten leads to an easy basket for a teammate. Um, you know he really improved as a shooter during his time at Illinois. He improved as a decision maker and an overall facilitator and just really a player. Um, you know this guy wasn't really on NBA draft radars after. Um, I would say probably uh, his senior season in high school. Um, he tested the waters, I think, two years in a row before ultimately deciding to come back for his junior season, where now it's just like an obvious, um, it's just obvious that he should be going to the NBA. Um, but, you know, so he's been around, you know, he's seen the NBA combine from various years. And, you know, it's just kind of an interesting, interesting development story, I would say. Right there, he's not going to be able to get that one to go, but he's really good at getting downhill, especially off of a ball screen. Um, you know, he's very right-hand oriented. You're not going to see him finish a lot with his left hand, but he is kind of herky-jerky in the way he moves, so he can kind of create space that way. Not the super fastest guy, like in terms of end-to-end -end or just even with the ball in his hands, but he finds ways to get shots up at the rim. Um, that one just doesn't really go down for him. Um... 
but yeah, just kind of a guy that will, uh, you know, make the extra effort defensively. Um, kind of screams third guard to me at the NBA level. You can play him in three guard lineups because of that defensive versatility that he has. Can probably guard one through three uh, in some spots. Definitely anywhere on the perimeter, he's going to be very solid. Um, and then it comes down to the offense, like the shooting. He shot 39% from three this year, averaged 20 points a game, which is obviously very, very good. Um, but scouts still kind of have concerns about the shooting just because it doesn't really look super natural for him just yet. Um, and he's still kind of working on that. But given where he was with his shot his freshman year, um, he kind of revamped his form and it looks a lot smoother now than it did um, a few seasons ago or even last year. So, you know, just kind of you kind of see the physical and just overall just the visible improvements that Iowa's made right here. He's going to kind of make this try, try and make this wraparound pass to uh, Kofi Coburn. Can't get it all the way through, but again, I appreciate the vision there. And it's going to be Illinois ball. And I believe, is Iowa out for a little bit right here? No, he's in for like another like 17 seconds. Nope, now yeah, now he's going to come out. It was very weird. They subbed him out really quickly. And then um, he was basically in the entire second half. So just thought that was strange, just in terms of like a uh, pattern thing. But uh, he'll be back in right here. And so again, he's inbounding the ball. And, you know, something that I really like about Iowa is just the overall versatility that he offers. You know, at Illinois, he would often be playing in four-guard lineups. He could play on or off the ball. Um, you know, has good size at 6'5", 205, you know. Um, he's built really well, you know, can defend multiple positions on the perimeter. And so he just offers a lot of things to you for from an NBA perspective, whether it be, you know, maybe running some secondary pick and roll on the wing, maybe you know, taking over that bench unit and being kind of like a backup point guard at times, and then also just kind of being like, assuming that shot is legit and the 39% kind of holds um, in the NBA, um, you know, being just like a floor spacer type player as well. So right there, good entry pass into Georgie Bashanasvili, but they're going to get a three seconds in the lane call, and uh, it's going to be Rutgers ball. So let's see where Io is. I think he's going to be guarding, um, uh, yeah, Mulcahy for Rutgers. And you can see him again. He's very active defensively. He'll be talking constantly, moves his feet, heads on a swivel, off the ball. He's very aware. He'll do things like that, which I think are really good. It just kind of shows his, like, disruptive nature defensively. You know, just kind of having that feel for when to attack, when to kind of just play your role defensively. He's very good at that. Won't make a lot of mistakes on that end of the floor. Right here, you can see kind of a smart time to double Miles Johnson, and it ultimately is, it almost leads to the steal, um, but it's going to be a layup. But again, you can see the activity defensively that he does offer. And right now, you can see, like, just look at the lineup Illinois is playing. So you got Andre Corbello, guard, Trent Frazier, guard, Coleman Hawkins basically plays like a guard and an IO, right? So it's actually kind of funny because on Real GM, um, great site, I'm sure you guys are, a lot of you guys are familiar with it. Um, on Real GM, it's really funny because when they're uh, listing off depth charts for all these college teams, they actually put Io in the power forward spot, which I think is pretty hilarious just because Illinois played super small this year around Kofi Coburn, obviously, in the middle. Um, so again, I think, obviously, he's not a power forward, you know, but um, just kind of showing that versatility um, that he does provide. Um, you can see right here, kind of zoning up that weak side, and now he's back onto Geo Baker. Good deflection by Trent Frazier. And we got, let's see what we got here. Yep, and here we go. We're back again, Io on Geo Baker. And you can see he's just super solid defensively. He has good wingspan, good reach. Knows how to make himself bigger, you know, which I think a lot of guys struggle to do, especially early. Um, he'll, he'll crash the glass. Again, he's a triple-double threat every night. Average 26-6, and six basically, in college. You can see right there, this is the revamped shot for him. So if you go back and watch his shooting form from his freshman and sophomore seasons, like, it's... It's pretty ugly, you know what I mean? And so right now, I get that this isn't the prettiest shot for him, right? But it's a low release point, right? It looks like he's thinking about it too much, things like that. Obviously not the most fluid, but compared to where it was, like this, it is so much better um, today than it was in the past. And so to see that kind of, you know, that visible improvement, um, both in terms of eye test and then obviously numbers, um, I think it kind of goes to show like his overall work ethic. And again, he's a guy that, you know, no NBA team, no Intel calls is going to have anything bad to say about Io. You know, he was a leader for this Illinois team. The second he walked in the door back in 2018, 
And um, obviously, they reaped the benefits of having him for three years. Illinois was a one seed in the NCAA tournament. They exited a little bit early to Loyola Chicago in that second round. Obviously, not a great game for Iowa or Illinois. But, um, you know, overall, like, just kind of getting that Illinois program back on the map, Iowa Dasumu is going to be a guy that Illinois fans will just adore for years to come. Uh, right here, a little bit of a miscommunication. So Io is telling somebody, turns out to be nobody, to take this Montez Mathis guy, right, as he's streaking down the floor. It's going to be an easy lob play. They, Rutgers just can't capitalize. So you can see Io's pointing out, saying, hey, somebody take this, right? But he doesn't realize that one, two, three, four, he's probably in the best spot to take this. And so part of it is just like, okay, at least he knows that there's a guy here, right? A lot of guys wouldn't even recognize that. But then the secondary processing of like, oh, I'm the closest guy. I need to be taking him on this lob to the basket, right? And you can see easy lob play for Rutgers. They just can't capitalize on it. Um, and you can see Io's just kind of like, hey, man, what the fuck, you know? Um, yeah, but again, you can see the leadership right there. Just, you know, always going to be the loudest guy in the room. Um, not in like a negative sense, obviously, but just kind of somebody who you'll, you'll hear his voice, right? And I think that can be really... Um, just kind of reassuring to teammates. And obviously, I think he knows just how to take a step back once he enters an NBA locker room. But in terms of like what he did at Illinois, kind of just like revamping this entire program, I think it was really, really impressive. Because this Illinois team, like this program, like for a lot of you guys, you know, you probably aren't from Illinois, but like I'm from Illinois. And so like there are a lot of these programs that uh, I'll be wind right here. But um, you can see Io. Um, not the most naturally inclined playmaker. Um, it's something that he really had to work on during his time at Illinois. He got a lot better, obviously, but there are still some times where you can tell it's just not really a natural fit for him. Um, so right here, he's going to try and make this little lob pass to Kofi Coburn, and he just doesn't really get enough under it. Uh, he kind of misreads. I think this is uh, Omar Rui right here. Um, he misreads him. He thinks he's probably going to step up to Io, and then that leaves Kofi open for the lob. But he misreads that. Omaruyu drops, and then it just this pass can never get through, really. Going to be an easy turnover. And so, again, you kind of see um, with Io, it's like he has really good numbers, and he made some really good plays. But you can tell it's not like a natural thing for him to be doing all this, to be creating for others, to be the leading scorer on this team. You know what I mean? And so I think that kind of speaks to him as just kind of a player as he's going to get uh, draw a foul for a moving screen right there. Um, it kind of just speaks to him as a player. Like, he's a guy that's willing to put others before himself. You know what I mean? He's willing to take on the challenge of being a leading scorer, defending one of the better players on the opposing team every night, being the lead facilitator. You know what I mean? And that kind of just shows you the character of him, I think. Um, but getting back to my point, like, if you guys know Illinois basketball... Um, you know, I'm from Illinois, so like I kind of am more familiar with it than probably a lot of you guys are. This program was in the dumps, right? Like it was brutal. You know, John Gross was the head coach for a few years before they brought in Underwood and he didn't really deliver. Um, you know, Brad Underwood's first year, I don't think really went as according to plan as he wanted it to. Um, you know, Io comes in, their freshman, his freshman year is a little bit rocky and then their sophomore year, they just kind of take off. Um, you know, they're a tournament team before it gets canceled, obviously due to COVID. Um, and then the junior year, just obviously, you know, leading him to a one seed, right? Something that Illinois basketball hasn't seen since 2005. Um, right here, this simple stuff defensively, right? He's going to, uh, you know, basically prevent Geo Baker from using this ball screen, right? And I think this is the type of stuff that kind of goes unnoticed when you're watching the game more for just like a team perspective. But when you're watching a guy individually, you can kind of pick this stuff up. So just watch how he's basically kind of forcing Geo Baker away from that screen, right? Kind of forcing him back into traffic, leading to an air ball, right? And that all happens because Io is kind of busting up that initial action um, for Rutgers, right? Right here, um, I, I obviously know he misses the shot, but just to see the development and just to see like where he was freshman year with this kind of stuff, like the fact that he's even comfortable enough and that this looks somewhat fluid in terms of a pull-up jumper, I understand it's like a bad shot, long two, but just the fact that he's willing to go between his legs and then kind of step back a little bit and rise and fire off the dribble, and it looks somewhat normal, I think that's something that's really, really important um, and just kind of speaks to his overall development. Again, it's kind of like a, um, this video kind of has like a developmental theme to it, you know what I mean? He's a guy that came back to college, worked on all of his stuff, and he ultimately played himself into a way better draft position. Uh, this is going to be a Trent Frazier layup right here. And we got Rutgers ball. 
And so, yeah, so again, uh, Io is going to be on Mulcahy. And again, kind of in that weak side. Uh, good job rotating over. Again, just always has his head on a swivel. Not really going to get beat. If he does get beat, like he kind of did right there, he's going to recover pretty fast. Has good feel for when to kind of attack defensively and when to kind of hold back. As we got a uh, ter- missed shot for Rutgers. Let's see what happens here. We got a travel. I think he may have stepped out of bounds. Let's see what he does here. Kind of going under that DHO. Just following following Geo Baker around. Um, his versatility defensively, I think, is pretty legit. Again, he could get rebounds, too. You can see he kind of got poked in the eye right there. Um, but he really just did a little bit of everything for Illinois. Did what was asked of him and more. Um... And so that's why I'm kind of confident in him being a key contributor on an NBA team because there are a lot of things that he can do to the point of it being useful on an NBA floor, right? He's obviously not going to be the best shooter. He's not going to be the best distributor, but he's good enough at a lot of different things to the point where it's like, you know, for his role as kind of just like an off the bench, like, you know, playmaker, whether it be primary or secondary, um, I think he has enough of that in his bag um, as an overall player to really find success in the NBA and then maybe turn into maybe like a low-end starter um, in certain spots, right? We got uh, free throws for Montez Mathis. I was going to grab that board. And here we go. Being guarded by Jacob Young, who just transferred somewhere. I forget. Maybe Oregon. Um, this entire Rutgers team, by the way, like they basically all just like noped out of there. Like it's unbelievable. How many, pe- how many players transferred? <laughs> like, uh, I think Ron Harper Jr. is in the draft. Um, Geo Baker, I think, is staying. But um, Jacob Young's gone. Um, I think Miles Johnson is gone. So just a lot of moving parts for Rutgers. Right there, I have a decent stunt while not uh, losing focus for that corner shooter. And Miles Johnson's going to get the role. Miles Johnson's going to UCLA to study, like, engineering or something. He's super smart. And he's going to be a very, very key part of the UCLA team that's probably going to be like a Final Four contender from day one. Um, Illinois, though, if you got any Illinois fans watching this, today, probably in about 12 hours from now, I'm recording this at like 1 in the morning on Friday, um, you guys know what day it is. It is Kofi Coburn commitment time. I think he's down to Florida State and Illinois, right? Um, and so that'll be that'll be interesting. I think uh, I was out for a little bit right here. Um, I'll get him back in. Uh, Kofi Coburn obviously entered the transfer portal, was testing the waters in the NBA draft, decided to come back, and now he's in the transfer portal. He's down to Florida State and Illinois because he was down to Kentucky, Florida State, and Illinois, but then I think uh, Kentucky Sports Radio reported that it's not going to be Kentucky for him. And so we'll see what happens tomorrow. I hope he stays at Illinois just because, you know, that would be awesome for the program. But, you know, we'll see what he ends up doing. I think he's going to come back to Illinois. That's my official prediction on that. Let's see what Io does here. And again, just kind of like a little bit of just the herky-jerkiness, right? He's not a guy who has that tight of a handle for him to be able to beat guys off the dribble consistently. But can he create enough space um, to maybe get some openings? I think he can right there. Kind of an accidental pass to Kofi Coburn. Um, But, you know, it got there. And, you know, he's good at kind of taking advantage of what the defense gives him. You know, if they go under a screen, he's comfortable kind of pulling that three. Um, You know, if they double him, he's good at finding the open player, things like that. Not a guy that's going to really be creating his own advantages, but somebody who can definitely, um, you know, take advantage of those already set up for him. Uh, Right here in transition, we'll run it back. Uh, Andre Curbelo is going to get that to Io. Could have been a charge, moving his feet though. And again, he's going to finish through contact. Below the rim finisher, but he's a guy that's physical. He's tough at the rim. You know, he'll put pressure on defenses just in terms of his backdoor cutting. And then obviously in transition, it's really where he can become unleashed. Um, We'll see a few good passes in transition later. But um, in transition, you know, playing against a not set defense, Io can really shine because he's pretty smart in the open floor. You know, has good feel for where teammates are going to be. And, you know, obviously he has somewhat of a finishing package to the point where it can be, um, you know, advantageous for him in the open floor. Not going to make this free throw woefully short. Again, the shot, like, the numbers were pretty good. I think he overall was a, uh, 
Let me look at this. Uh, he's like close to 49% from the floor overall, 39% from three, uh, a little bit below 80% from the line. Like, the numbers are pretty solid, right? But just a lot of people really have concerns about the shot. Personally, I understand the concerns. I don't really think he has NBA range right now. Um, I think a lot of the shot looks pretty coached and just kind of, um, you know, methodical. Um, but again, just kind of taking into account where he started from, I think that's kind of got to play into it, right? Um, I think this was his first year kind of shooting with that new form. Um, and I think that's only going to get better. I know from personal experience, when I was... You know, I was considered one of the best shooters in my middle school basketball conference, right? Not to brag, but um, going into eighth grade, I knew I needed to, to totally revamp my shot form, right? I had to go from like a uh, like a shot put type of deal, right, from my from my right right shoulder to um, basically just like a normal looking jump shot, and like you know, it was tough. I didn't shoot that great in eighth grade, and that's probably why. You know, what I mean, I had to revamp my shot form right here. I O in transition, right, kind of the loose handle right there, manages to get it back. But again, in the open floor, this is a really impressive pass, right? So in the open floor, again, not playing against a set defense. So he kind of has that space to kind of take advantage of. And right here, the obvious pass is going to be Trent Frazier. But just kind of Io looking ahead, finding open players down the floor, is just going to whip a pass down to uh, Coleman Hawkins. And uh, it didn't look like he caught that cleanly because that should have been an open three. But it leads to a three off of that one pass to Trent Frazier, right? And that all is happening because of Io and his ability to put pressure on defenses from 70 feet away from the basket, right? And so that's something that I think he does really well. And again, that's something that in the NBA can definitely be useful for him. Got another rebound from Kofi Coburn. And here's Io running the ball, um, running on the ball. And again, we've seen him on the ball, off the ball. doesn't really matter where you play him. Um... I do think, though, he's going to be a very, very productive NBA player. In terms of draft stock, probably like, uh, I'd probably say like 18 to 24, I would say, is his range right now. I feel like sometimes I just kind of spit out arbitrary numbers, but I think I have a pretty good idea of where guys are going to end up for me. Um, right here, though, really nice job just kind of, again, taking what the defense is giving him, right? He notices that Miles Johnson is in drop coverage. Kofi Coburn sets a pretty decent screen, and he's just going to rise and fire over Coburn, right? And he's not hitting that type of shot his freshman year, right? Just kind of that off the dribble, fade away, off the glass, super clean, over a very good shot blocker, right? Just kind of having that those uh, that intelligence, really, to kind of get that shot over Miles Johnson, taking advantage of what the defense has given him, and that's exactly where um, he'll shine the brightest. Uh, we got Papa John's Better Pizza, Better Ingredients, Better Pizza. Um, we got Heineken, and we're back to action here. And there's a replay of that shot just catching very cleanly off the glass. And we got, and we're back here. So again, Io on Mulcahy. You can see just mirroring the ball, right? That's what they teach you in middle school. You know, mirror the ball, watch the defend, watch the guy's hips. You know what I mean? Things like that. Io, very solid, very stout defender. We've had a lot of these guys recently, right? We've seen. Uh, Jaden Springer the other day, um, he was like that. Um, you know, Io I think is another one that falls into that category. We're gonna watch Chris Duarte in the coming days, and he's very much like that. Um, you know, a lot of really, really talented defensive guards in this draft. I think. I think compared to last year, like the defense in this class, I think is better. Um, looking at the first round, you know, um, and that's all basically effort. You know what I mean? It's pretty much effort because all these guys are decently athletic enough to the point where, you know, they can hold their own. Um, it really just comes down to focus, energy, intensity, all that stuff. Io definitely has that. We're going to see him use that ball screen. Really nice job here. Doesn't really get him anywhere in terms of space, but just kind of showing that improvement with his handle. I know I mentioned that his handle's not super tight, but he can do things like this where he's just freezing his man with a hesitation dribble, right? And, um, you know, just kind of getting him off balance, even though it doesn't really lead to anything there but he definitely does have some sort of bag and right there this is where he really puts pressure on the rim right not in a traditional sense because he's not an above the rim finisher right but just these back cuts he's a very instinctual cutter right I think he has like three of these in this game alone right where he's just acknowledging the overplay and again it's not about him creating the advantages it's him taking advantage of the advantages created for him right so he notices that the defense that the defender is overplaying him what time is it? It's time for a back cut, right? And so he obviously gets it and finishes uh, through the length right there, kind of glides towards the rim. 
we got uh, Jacob Young just throwing up some, basically some prayer um, to get that one to go. And so that's where I kind of think Io is going to shine, just kind of, you know, playing off the ball, um, you know, again, just kind of being, um, taking advantage of openings that are presented to him. And yeah, that's basically what a third guard does. You know what I mean? If he can hit shots off the catch, I know he struggled with that this past season, despite shooting 39% from three. Um, you know, I think that he his value skyrockets in my mind. Um, let's see what we got here. Slight, very subtle thing that Io did right here. Um, you know, you can see Mulcahy's going to throw this lob, I think. No, it's not a lob, but you can kind of see Io just kind of clip Omaruji a little bit. Not really a foul, but just kind of getting him out of position, right, for that rebound. And Kofi's obviously going to grab it. But just kind of the little things that Io does defensively, the instinctual things that go unnoticed when you're just watching the game for fun, right? Um, and those are all things that really contribute to winning. And here we go, Io again, simple pass. Again, just taking advantage of what's given to him, right? He's not going to, he does have a tendency to kind of like make these crazy passes that are pretty much unwarranted and he gets a lot of turnovers like that. That needs to be cut out, right? But in terms of these passes, simple two on one, right? He's not going to make the mistake. He's not going to, you know, force up some junk. Just simple, boom, right? Um, that's basically Io's game in terms of passing. He's a very... You know, a guy who doesn't overthink things, which I think is good. Um, and, you know, he keeps basketball simple, which is always a good thing. Right there, decent stunt. I think we got, I think we got a foul. I'm not really sure. Uh, that one, yeah, I think that was kind of shaky. You got Montez Mathis shooting the free throws. They can't get, actually, I don't even know if that went in. but um, And now you can see Io playing off the ball. Remember, we talked about it. He can play on or off ball. It doesn't matter. And right there, just showing that feel, you know, seeing that Kofi Coburn has his man seal under the basket, and I was going to deliver a really nice pass to him um, on the block, right? And so it's going to be a foul leading to free throws. Um, and, you know, I will say this, Kofi Coburn really helped out Io's draft stock in my mind, because there were a ton of plays this year, whether it be a lob, whether it be entry passes, plays like that, where they're kind of just throwing over the top of the defense, um, you know, Kofi Coburn was an awesome play finisher for Io, and I think that really helped him out. Um, it helped Illinois out a shit ton, and it helped Io out a shit ton as well. Um, so I think that's um, important to note because Coburn, um, good player, but he didn't really get as much credit as he deserved, I don't think. Um, because especially going into like the latter half of Big Ten play, he was unstoppable on the block. Um, and he really helped out Illinois a, a very, a, you know, a shitload. Um, we got a deep three, and that's going to go in for Jacob Young. Let's see what we got here. Io on the le in the left corner, going to get that DHL. Let's see what he does here. Coming off that ball screen, and again, just kind of like the simple thing. You can tell like the playmaking doesn't really come naturally to him. Kind of is loose with the ball at times. This is going to be a turnover that probably can be avoided if he just kind of, I don't even know, was he trying to get this layup? Regardless, I think he could have jump stopped and maybe floatered it. Um, but again, good strip by Mulcahy right there for Rutgers. But, um, you know, Io definitely needs to be a little bit more, you know, controlled with the ball. He averaged around, I think, I want to say three, yeah, three and a half turnovers a game, which obviously is a lot. Um, granted, he had the ball in his hands a lot as well, so it kind of makes sense. But, um, you know, he definitely needs to improve in that regard, I would say. But I do think as his usage comes down, his turnovers will come down naturally. You know, so that's something that I think will be valuable. Right there, good job. Again, he loves coming off these little curls, right? And so just kind of attacking that middle of the floor off of him too. Right, and you can see right there, he's going to get that foul call. Um, Could have been an and one. And in the NBA, that's an and one. But um, right here, it's not. We got Io shooting one and one. I think he's going to miss this free throw. Yeah, and again, you can see the form's a little bit a little bit weird, but if you just look at his, the evolution of it compared to his freshman year, I, I can assure you it's really not that bad um, by comparison to previous IO renditions. Uh, right here, um, you know, not the best shot selection, I would, I'll admit, but um, just the fact that he's willing to take these, you know, these two dribble pull-ups, I think that's worth something, you know what I mean? We got uh, Illinois ball here. I was going to inbound it, get it to Georgie. Let him go to work. We're going to let no. We're not. 
So Corbello's going to come in. Andre Corbello is probably one of the more fun players to watch in America. Um, Kofi's going to, uh, looks like we got a jump ball there. So we'll skip ahead here. Io's on Geo Baker on that right wing. And again, you can just see the intensity he plays with. You know, kind of like the ball you man thing. He's never really out of position defensively. And when he is, it's always a smart gamble right there. Again, you can kind of see where, like, the shot, like, again, 39% three-point shooter, but some of his misses were pretty concerning. And so you could tell, like, maybe it's a fluky season. I know we talked about that a little bit with Davion Mitchell. Um, I think Davion's shot is much better um, long-term than Io's is. But um, you can just kind of see sometimes, like, he has some bad misses. He'll get streaky from the free-throw line. You know what I mean? And so I think the concerns about his jump shot are totally valid. I just think... You know, even if he shoots like 34% from three, right, I still think as long as he makes enough of them to keep the defense honest, it doesn't really matter. You know what I mean? Because he just offers so many other things. He could offer secondary creation um, in terms of passing the ball and distributing. Um, he could offer really stout perimeter defense, versatile the perimeter defense at, at that as well. Um, and this overall, like the attitude, the leadership qualities that he has, um, I think he can kind of survive um, you know, maybe just like a little bit of a shooting slump here and there. You know what I mean? Um, obviously, now, if he's shooting like 23% from three, then obviously he's unplayable. Um, but I really don't think it's going to be that bad. And again, given his trajectory, you know, I expect that shooting for him to become tighter and tighter and overall just more consistent as his time in the NBA kind of um, progresses. We got a timeout here, so let's skip ahead. And here we go. They're going to slip that screen. Corbello's going to kick it to, uh, looks like we got a foul here. Is Corbello shooting free throws? Yes, he is. And here we go. So we've got Jacob Young right there. Here's Io on uh, Geo Baker again. That's kind of seeming to be his matchup. You can see just like little things right here. So he's just kind of talking, pointing, calling out switches, things like that. And again, that's all super valuable defensively. You know what I mean? And so, like, just the little understated things that you can just kind of watch. Um, Jacob Young tried to just end Kofi Coburn's life right there. Um, but just, like, the little things that you can kind of see make a huge difference, I would say, for Illinois. Um, and again, they're going to lose their this game. And this is, like, a little bit before they kind of hit their stride as a team. Um, but Io was definitely the catalyst behind all of their success this year, I would say. And here we go. We got uh, 15 seconds, final play of the half, most likely. And we'll see what they have in store for us. Looks like it's going to be a high ball screen with Coburn. Nope, they're not going to do it. Io is going to get it to uh, Bashanas Vili. Coburn in the paint. Can't get that one to go. And that's going to end the first half. So I will pause the game right here um hopefully you guys enjoyed this one on io you know again like just kind of just looking at his track record of constant improvement consistent improvement um year over year i think that's something that really needs to be considered with him kind of just in terms of a long-term play um you know he's somebody that i think that can contribute right away due to his defense and overall leadership capabilities and so yeah we got one more half to go with io he'll be a lot more active in terms of scoring the basketball in this second half so just stay tuned for that and yeah, we will see you then. Thanks so much and have a great night. Bye.